Hello and welcome to Incoming, a new offshoot series from the Templin Institute where we talk about what's going on in some of our favorite science fiction or fantasy worlds in a more casual and slightly unscripted manner compared to our regular episodes. My name is Mark, and while I usually hide behind the scenes doing scripting and editing work, and maybe after hearing my attempts to narrate this you'd wish I'd stayed there, but with Star Trek Discovery only a few weeks away now, I'd like to take this chance to talk about the era the show takes place in, what the Star Trek galaxy is like at this point in the timeline, and then try and speculate on what we can anticipate in this new show. So let's jump right in. Now, weirdly enough, just figuring out when Star Trek Discovery takes place is one of the more puzzling questions we need to answer. The show's marketing has said that Discovery is set 10 years before Kirk, Spock, and the Enterprise. So, is that 10 years before Kirk and Spock were born, 10 years before the Enterprise was built, or 10 years before the events of the original series? At this point, going off additional comments from some of the cast and crew, that 10 years before the original series answer is most likely the right one, that means Discovery takes place sometime in the 2250s or 100 years after Star Trek Enterprise and about 110 before Star Trek The Next Generation. Now that's suspiciously close to when the rebooted universe under J.J. Abrams takes place, but the show's producers and showrunners have repeatedly said that Discovery takes place in the Prime Universe, so we'll be working off that assumption. Now whether you believe them is another question entirely, and I'll be talking a bit more about that towards the end of the video. So what's going on in the Star Trek universe of the 2250s? Well, let's start by going through the Big Three. The Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans. At this point, the Federation has been around for about 90 years. While it isn't the huge superpower we see in the Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, it's likely the equal of any other empire or nation in its region of the galaxy, and is expanding relatively quickly. It's encountered the Romulans, the Klingons, the Tholians, and probably has a very good idea of what its region of the galaxy looks like. We can also assume that the Federation has accepted the membership of dozens of new species and worlds, although humans, Vulcans, Andorians, and Tellarites remain the most powerful members and form the core of Starfleet. And speaking of Starfleet, it's a unified service at this point, with standardized ship designs, aesthetics, and iconography. While it's not impossible that we'll see older Vulcan or Andorian style vessels, they'd probably be in civilian service or in some other specialized role within Starfleet. And interestingly enough, the Enterprise and other ships of the Constitution class are already in service at this point, with the Enterprise in particular having been around for over five years. Will we see the Enterprise in Star Trek Discovery under the command of one of its previous captains? Well, it's certainly possible. So to summarize, the Federation is in its first golden age. The memories of the Romulan and Zindi Wars have largely faded, Starfleet is exploring the galaxy, encountering new life and new civilizations, and living in peace and harmony, with one exception. Things are not looking good with the Klingons. While the relationship between the Klingons and the Federation has always been kind of rocky, the situation took a turn for the worse in the 2220s, and in the decades leading up to Discovery, the two powers are locked in a type of Cold War. Unlike the Federation, the Klingon Empire is almost ancient, having existed for thousands of years and been capable of warp travel for at least the past few centuries. In that time, their aggressive and brutal nature has brought them into conflict with basically every major power in the Quadrant, including the Romulans, the Breen, and now the Federation. In looking at the recent trailers for Star Trek Discovery, it seems that the Klingon Empire is in a state of chaos during the show with the various houses that make up the Klingon High Council at odds with both the Federation and each other. We've seen numerous examples in The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine of rivalries between the Great Houses, and it looks like at this point in its history the Empire is almost at the breaking point. The Augment Virus that spread across the Klingon people during the events of Star Trek Enterprise is still in effect, and a significant percentage of the Klingons resemble humans because of it. Or at least they're supposed to. I'd be remiss if I didn't comment on the dramatically different nature of the Klingons we've seen in Discovery so far. According to people in the show, these Klingons are from an ancient house that are more pure or something. I never really understood that explanation, and I know I'm not alone, so I think we're just going to have to wait for the show to air before we get any more information on this. One thing I do find interesting is that the Klingons we've seen in Star Trek up to this point haven't been very religious. Sure, they have a deeply developed mythos surrounding their version of the afterlife, but by their own admission, their gods are dead, killed by Klingon warriors for having been more trouble than they were worth. While various rituals are performed upon death, Klingons didn't seem to have any burial arrangements, with dead Klingons considered empty shells and treated as such. So to have this incredibly ornate Klingon sarcophagus ship show up in Discovery is kind of strange. My personal theory is that this ship might in actuality belong to the Herc, a species from the other side of the galaxy that invaded and plundered the Klingon homeworld in the 14th century. There's been a lot of theories that the Klingons may have seen this highly advanced race as gods, and overthrowing them and retaking Kronos led to the formation of the modern Klingon religion. If one of those Klingon houses decided to continue their warship for the Herc and cruise around the galaxy in some of their looted starships, it would explain quite a bit, although I really doubt this is the case. It would be cool though. So the last of the big three, the Romulans. 
At this point, the Romulan Star Empire is still bitter about its defeat a century earlier by the Earth-led coalition, and has largely retreated into isolationism. However, in 2266, about a decade after Discovery is set, the Romulans begin a series of attacks on Federation outposts, so it's possible the Romulan Empire is right in the middle of gearing up for renewed presence across the Alpha Quadrant, and we might see some evidence of this in Discovery. An important thing to note is that at this point, the Federation still has no clue as to what the Romulans even look like, having never come into direct contact with them over the course of the war. There's been a few Romulan-looking ships in Discovery trailers, and while I highly doubt these are actually Romulan ships, an interesting theory I've seen is that the Romulans might be secretly attempting to start a war between the Federation and Klingons, so maybe we'll see some sort of Romulan presence in Discovery. Romulan plans always seem to fail, so if they do end up starting a war between the Federation and Klingons, it would be a nice win for them. That just leaves the secondary powers of the Star Trek galaxy. Now, I always got the sense that the Cardassian Union first encountered the Federation sometime after the original series and before the next generation, so it's hard to say if they're around during the Discovery era. Cardassians are mentioned as having explored what would become Federation space during Star Trek Enterprise, and they got a shout-out during the J.J. Abrams reboot, so I don't think it would break canon too badly if it was revealed that Cardassians were around much earlier than we assumed. We know during this time that Cardassia is impoverished and economically crippled, with the rise of a military dictatorship somewhere on the horizon. I always thought a cool story arc would be the fall of a Saigon-type scenario, where the Enterprise, or maybe now Discovery, must evacuate Federation ambassadors and personnel from Cardassia before nationalist forces win their civil war. Not something we're likely to see, but still possible. The ever-mysterious Breen have been in contact with at least the Klingons, so it's possible we'll see more of them. The Tholians have definitely been around for at least a few decades, and is one of the coolest looking alien races in Star Trek. I would absolutely love to see more of them in Discovery. That just leaves the Gorn, and while official contact with them won't be made for a decade after Discovery, it's possible they could show up as unidentified ships or whatever. So that's pretty much the state of the galaxy, and I'm sure I'm missing quite a few alien races from the era, but I think I've covered all the major ones. Now before I end this video, I think it's important I cover some of the rumors coming out of the Discovery production, because they directly affect the whole premise of the video. I'm not sure if these count as spoilers, but if you want to play it safe, just skip until the background turns blue again. Alright, if you're still here, let's get real. We know that Star Trek Discovery has been playing it fast and loose with Star Trek canon, so everything I've said could end up being completely wrong if Discovery plans on ignoring the events previously mentioned in the series. While well, people behind the show have repeatedly said that Discovery takes place in the Prime Universe and is respecting canon, rumor has it that a big trans-dimensional event will occur in the first episode in much the same way as the J.J. movies, effectively placing Star Trek Discovery in a separate timeline. This would be kind of disappointing, but would explain a lot of what we've already seen in released images and trailers, so it does seem kind of likely. To know for sure though, we'll just have to wait until the series airs on the 24th. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed my pedantic ramblings. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, and for those of you waiting for our next proper episode, it'll be out on Monday. I'd love to give you a hint as to what it's about, but I'm in the middle of some calibrations. The Templin Institute provides an analysis of factions, nations, and organizations from across fictional worlds and universes. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Is there another fictional universe that you'd like to learn more about? Let us know in the comment section.